Hi again, everybody. This video is sponsored by a contribution from Anonymous, and here is her story. Dear Ollie, please keep my name anonymous as I am dealing with to dealing day to day with this person currently. They probably they would probably not listen to these videos, but you never know. I have been gaining a lot of strength listening listening to your videos. I hear the stories and they trigger my own memories or current conversations and situations. Then I see them in a different light. I am writing to ask you to please talk about politeness and promises. I have so many examples. Here is one that may seem dumb, but is just the tip of the iceberg. I am helping a family member get back on their feet after prison. I say they can use whatever they want in the house and shed, tools, containers, and the like. I expected that they would have common courtesy to use something, then return it to where it was so everyone can have access to it, like the bucket under the kitchen sink. I feel stupid and petty for even, even mentioning it. I wanted to wash their car and ask if they could use the... They wanted to wash their car and ask if they could use the bucket. I said, sure. Later, I look for the bucket and can't find it. This was weeks later. I find it in the shed stuffed with random crap from his car and, wash and, and car wash detergent bottles. I also put, I put a, few, a few of his things on the dining room table for him to see and the soaps under the sink to use to wash the bathroom. He comes home and is aghast that I touched his things. Oh my God, he said. I was using that. I am dumbfounded because it feels like he is so justified to be outraged that that I dared to touch his things when in reality he commandeered my bucket to hoard crap in the shed. I know this sounds really stupid. The emotional involved the emotion involved is off the chain. There is there is not said, but felt accusations like, you said I could use it, and that means you are reneging, and you don't keep your word. I thought you said I was welcome to use whatever I wanted. He notices me using it and goes back about his business, OCD gardening, and acts like he is being so above it all to tolerate my rude behavior. I have a time delay in noticing this stuff because I fall for the emotional string every time. I bent over backwards trying to be agreeable. My flaw of people pleasing and be sure I haven't offended anyone and and am being fair. This is over a bucket shaking my head. He goes through the giant gyrations of going to the store and having to look for a bucket specifically because we have issues. Obviously, he has to solve it. Man, this is a long time coming. I feel a lot better talking about it. It is mostly silent judging and criticism constantly. I think my dad was an art too, and my bro got his traits. He really doesn't mean to be like that. I feel terribly because I know he has some bad abuses too, so I am very patient. But enough is enough, and I sent him a notice, a notice to move out in three months. There are other examples, like his hoarding. He got here last year when I was out of town. I found he stuffed the fridge with odd safe food in weird wrappers. I waited, I waited a week to settle in and begin cleaning here and there. When I got to the fridge, I tried to be logical and place his things where everyone can see them and use them, how the fridge is designed. There is a bin for fruits and veggies and cheese butter compartment and condiment shells on the door. There was bacon loosely wrapped stuffed on top of a gallon of milk. That is raw meat on a container with food milk that doesn't get cooked. I put all the meats and cheeses in clean baggies in one drawer. In one drawer. I adjusted two tall shelves for all our bottles of drinks and that leaves two shelves for leftover dinner and dessert. He was constantly wrapping these cheese blocks in plastic bag in black plastic bags to save on baggies and then leaving it and then leaving it until it became a block of mold. He said he saved produce way too long, criticized me for living an on-demand lifestyle and not being prepared for foods 
food shortages, shortages or having a pantry. Well, my ex left me mid-renovation six years ago. I got cancer and lost my job, then Lyme's disease, then Lyme's disease. And so I haven't been able to finish the repairs and the and improvements this house needs. I agree it would have been great to have a pantry with canned foods and bags of dry goods, but I don't have an extra freezer at the moment or a second fridge in the garage, so this is my life right now. We refrigerate what we will eat for the week and have a few condiments that last, that last all month and have some frozen meats for a month or two. After listening to your videos again, I began to realize that I am not being controlling and make everyone do things my way. I'm just being normal. I also realize he doesn't care if I constantly have to go behind him to clear out surprise moldy food items or produce that turn to soap and is making fun and is making fresh stuff rot. He is also using workable daily use daily use space for long-term storage. There was a can of iced tea in the fridge for six months. My son finally drank it. Why do we need to store iced tea? Even writing this, I feel silly, but, but it is a big deal when you have a simmering emotion under the surface constantly and you can't have a normal conversation like, hey, where did you leave my buck? Where did you leave the bucket? I need to wash the bathroom and they say, oh, sorry, I left it in the garage. Here, let me get that for you. No way. It is. I was saving the metal burn bucket for you by keeping it in the chicken coop with, with poop on it, with poop in it. What? Yeah, it sat out in the rain and was rusting, but wet chicken poop rusts it from the inside out. It isn't even logical. And he is a very smart person. He says only, he says hot ash only on, on the lid. It says hot ash only on the lid. It is a tiny tin can. I threw it out, but not until after scream, him screaming at me how much he was helping me by using it. I didn't want a greenhouse and a garden and chickens. And ever since I bought this house almost 30 years, ever since I have bought this house almost 30 years ago. He does have a lot of expertise in this area, having had a homestead before. I spent a lot of money in several months, and we have a gangbuster greenhouse and coop that is inside it yet. Still no windows replaced or even a room painted. I just assumed it would be considerate and helpful. But I am realizing that very single thing he has done since he got here has been for himself. He loves to give away produce and eggs, but isn't saving me any money or helping helping my house. It cost him $18 a month for chicken feed and dried corn and hay, so the chickens aren't a money maker. Plus he makes, plus, saves me maybe $20 a month on eggs. The fresh tomatoes are great, but the electricity for winter heating was a little extravagant. Oh, the hose. Oh, man. He took my son's two 50-foot 50, 50 hoses and ran them around the backyard through the greenhouse to then stand at my front door and spray from there. The end of the leak was, the end of the leak was by the nozzle. I, end, I asked him to turn it off when not in use so it wouldn't spray constantly. He acted like I was demanding a very difficult thing with all the work he created for himself in the garden. I wrote an email a few months ago saying I wanted it removed and just run from the run from the front door of the house across the lawn for the garden. This way we can wash cars and whatever we need at the house. These two hoses were stepped on, got very dirty, were were in the way of the greenhouse, in the greenhouse. But somehow this fulfilled his idea of what is right. I went out of town for a bit and came back with my head clear from having been on proper limes meds for six months now and being away a month and living normally. He was out of town for a week, so I cleaned the so I cleaned the yard. So I cleaned the yard quickly and had a fire for two days, burning up scrap wood and building materials that would be more raised be beds 
and garden steaks. We have enough of those. He is behaving nicely because I have because I have guests for the summer and grandbabies. I have it clean for them is I have to have I have to have it clean for them is a great excuse. Oh man, he's, he, he is definitely going to know this is him if he ever hears this email read. I feel badly because he does apologize, and I think truly he wants to be a better person. But you have to face the hard, harsh truth about your issues to get better. I was in the dark. I saw my ex was a, was a narc, but, but I'm coming to realize that my dad and his brother probably are as well. This makes sense because girls marry their dads anyway. Anyway, I wanted the garden. I wanted the coop. That was my choice to go along, but I was told very low cost at the start and promised he would be making lots of money so we could do all this fun, dream, suburb, preppy stuff, but in a neat way. I feel like I'm going back on my word, but when I think of it, he made a lot of promises that made me go along to see what would happen and basically and basically lied or just didn't respond when I asked for specific plans or price lists. Like it was all too much and I would see and just like it was all too much and I would see and just stop being impatient and demanding and asking questions. Let's just do it. I am a very kind person. I have been a doormat and I am learning to get out of that. I have set limits and said you can't yell at me on my own in my own home because I want to make a simple dinner of pasta and I don't want to coordinate with you what you want to eat. I am not his wife he lost. I am not his daughters. I am not his personal assistant or work crews he used to have. Well, it is too much for one email. I do not want to record this all, so I Oh, I do want to record this all so I don't forget it. So so I don't forget and it gets more firmly set in my mind that I am behaving properly and within and within normal bounds of expectation of of, ex, of expectation for living with other people. I just don't like people anymore. I don't know everyone is paying. I have to stand up for myself and fight all the time, it feels like. Well, he will be okay. He has, a lot of, he has a lot of skills. I need to take the time to read and write and draw, which is what I want to do, but seems dumb to most people. I have to stop agreeing with people who use me for their own goals, and I get lost. There, there was promises, and I was misled. So now I am doing something about it. I don't, even get to, I don't even get him staying up late at night and knocking on my door loudly and wanting to talk about a video. Or here is every text message to someone, and I am rude if I don't answer or say I want to go to sleep. Another letter. Well, thanks for listening. Anonymous. Okay. What you are dealing with here is the beginning stages of a hoarder. This is how hoarders all start out. Promises, delusions of grandeur, projects that, ne that that get started that never get finished, things leaking, rotting food, garbage. His reactions are all the reactions of a hoarder. You know, it's all me, 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 me. And I've already said hoarding is narcissism. They do it as a means of control. At first, I thought maybe because he was in prison, he was being overly protective. It sounded like a lot of prison stuff that was going on, protecting your things. But no, this is all hoarding. This is all hoarding and this is all narcissism. So you need to get him out of your house. The chicken coops, the greenhouses, all of it. It's all the building materials all over the house. Your house not even finished and he's doing other shit. Your house has to be the priority. This guy is going to hoard out your house as long as you allow them to live there. Every time you go away, you come back, there's shit all over the yard. You had to burn shit for two days. He needs to go. He needs to go and get help because you can't live like that. It's your home, not his. If you're uncomfortable, it's your rules, not his.
You helped him out. He has a car. He has a job. Time to go. Time to go. He only wants to stay there because of the size of your house and the potential to hoard it out. That's it. That's it. You need to get him out of your house before he turns, before you end up on hoarders or you have the town knocking on your door trying to condemn your property. And don't think that that can't happen real quick. Real, real quick. So thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your story. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any uh, opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover or a narcissist you'd like to expose, you know what to do with the PayPal and my email link in the description box. I'll have the video right back to you. This is Ali Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon.